have you done? Oh no, oh my gosh. It was seven minutes after midnight. The dog was lying on the grass in the middle of the lawn in front of Mrs. Shears' house. The eyes were closed. It looked as if it were running on its side, the way dogs run when they think they are chasing a cat in a dream. But the dog was not running or asleep. The dog was dead. Get away from my dog! There was a garden fork sticking out of the dog. The dog was called Wellington. It belonged to Mrs. Shears, who was our friend. She lived on the opposite side of the road, two houses to the left. Get away from my dog! My name is Christopher John Francis Boone. I live at 36 Randall Street, Swinton, Brookshire. I know all the countries of the world and capital cities, and I know every prime number for 7,507. Get away from my dog, for goodness sake! After 12 and a half minutes, a policeman arrived. He had a big orange leaf stuck to the bottom of his shoe and was poking out to one side. This is good, Christopher. It's exciting. I like these details. They make it more realistic. He squatted down next to me. He said to me, Would you like to tell me what's going on here? I cannot tell lies. Mother used to say this is because I'm a good person. But it is not because I'm a good person. It is because I don't tell lies. The dog is dead. I got that far. I think someone killed the dog. How old are you? I'm 15 years and three months and two days. And what precisely are you doing in the garden? I'm talking to you. Okay. Why were you in the garden in the first place? I was holding the dog. Why were you holding the dog? I like dogs. Did you kill the dog? I did not kill the dog! <laughs> you seem very upset about this. I'm going to ask you once again. Very good. Young man, I'm going to ask you to stop making that noise and stand up, please, calmly and quietly. Marvelous. Great. Just flipping. Ah! I'm arresting you for assaulting a police officer. I strongly advise that you get into the back of the police car, because if you try any of that monkey business again, you stupid idiot, I'm going to seriously lose it. Do you understand? me for two main reasons. The first main reason is that people do a lot of talking without using any words. Siobhan says that if you raise one eyebrow, it can mean lots of different things. It can mean, I want to do sex with you. I never said that. Yes, you did. I didn't use those words, Christopher. You did on September 12th last year, at first break. And it can also mean, I think that what you just said is very stupid. Could you empty your pockets onto the desk, please? Is that in case I have anything in them that I could use to kill myself or escape or attack a policeman with? That's right. I have a Swiss army knife, but I only use that for doing odd jobs, not for stabbing things or hurting people. Jolly good. A piece of string. A piece of a wooden puzzle. Three pellets of rat food for Toby, my pet rat. One pound thirty-seven. This was made off of a one pound coin, a twenty p coin, two ten p coins, a five p coin, and a two p coin. A red paper clip. A key for the front door. A Swiss Army knife with thirteen attachments, including a wire stripper and a saw and a toothpick and tweezers. Did you take your watch off, please, Christopher? No. I'm sorry, Christopher. I need my watch to know exactly what time it is. Give it here. Ah! All right, so you keep it. Do you have any family, Christopher? Yes, I do. And who is your family? Father and mother, but mother is dead. And also Uncle Terry. He is in Sunderland, and he's my father's brother. And my grandparents too, but three of them are dead. And Grandma Burton is in a home because she has senile dementia and thinks I'm someone on television. Right, lovely. Do you know your father's phone number, Christopher? See the Milky Way as they drove me towards the town center. Could you? Some people think the Milky Way is a long line of stars, but it isn't. Our galaxy is a huge disk of stars millions of light years away. For a long time, scientists were puzzled by the fact that our sky is dark at night, even though there are billions of stars in our universe. Is that right? Christopher, Mr. Boone. Could you come this way, please? Are you going to interview me and record the interview? I don't think that would be necessary. I've spoken to your father, and he says that you didn't mean to hit the policeman. 
Did you mean to hit the policeman? Yes. But you didn't mean to hurt the policeman. No, I didn't mean to hurt the policeman. I just wanted him to stop touching me. You know that it is wrong to hurt a policeman, don't you? I do. Did you kill the dog? I did not kill the dog. Do you know that it is wrong to lie to a police officer and that you could get into a great deal of trouble if you do? Yes. Do you know who killed the dog? No. Are you telling the truth? Yes, I always tell the truth. Right. I'm going to give you a caution. Is that going to be on a piece of paper? Like a certificate I can keep? No. A caution means that we are going to keep a record of what you did. That you hit the policeman, but that it was an accident, and that you didn't mean to hurt the policeman. But it wasn't an accident. Christopher, please. If you get into any more trouble, we will take out this record and see that you have been given a caution, and we will take things much more seriously. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. The second main reason I find people confusing is that people often talk using metaphors. These are examples of metaphors. I am seriously going to lose it. She used the apple of her eye. They had a skeleton in the cupboard. We had a real sick of a day. The dog was stone dead. The word metaphor means carrying something from one place to another, and it is when you describe something by using a word that it isn't. That means the word metaphor is a metaphor. Wow, that's clever. It's true. Yes. I think I should be called a lie, however, because a pig is not like a day, and people don't keep skeletons in their cupboards. And when I try and make a picture of the phrase in my head, it just confuses me because imagining an apple inside someone's eye has nothing to do with liking them a lot, and it makes you forget what the person is talking about. I'm sorry. It's okay. I didn't kill Wellington. I know. Look, you've got to stay out of trouble, okay, Christopher? I didn't know that I was going to get into trouble. I like Wellington, and I went to say hello to him, but I didn't know that someone had killed him. Just try and keep your nose out of other people's business. I'm going to find out who killed Wellington. Were you listening to what I was just saying, Christopher? Yes, I was listening to what you were saying, but when someone gets murdered, you have to find out who did it so that they can be punished. Just leave it. I wonder if the police will find out who did it and punish the person. I said leave it, for God's sake. Are you sad about Wellington? Yes, Christopher, you could say that. You could very well say that. Mother died two years ago. I came home from school one day and no one answered the door. So I went and found the secret key under the flower pot outside the kitchen window. I let myself in and wet my feet on the mat. I put, I put the key in the bowl on the table and hung up my coat by the side of the refrigerator so that it would be ready for school the next day. I gave three pellets of rat food to Toby, who is my pet rat, and made a raspberry milkshake and heated it up in the microwave. Then, I went upstairs to my bedroom and turned on my bedroom light and played six rounds of Tetris, and got to level 38, which is my fourth best ever score. Oh! An hour later, Father came home from work. Christopher, have you seen your mom? No. He went downstairs and started making some phone calls. I could not hear what he said. Then, he came up to my bedroom, and said he'd be out for a while, but he didn't know how long he'd be. He said that if I needed anything, I should call him on his mobile phone. He was gone for two and a half hours. When he came back, I went downstairs. I'm afraid you're not going to be able to see your mother for a while, Christopher. Why not? She's had to go into hospital. She's had a problem with her heart. Can we visit her? No. Why can't we? Um, she needs to be on her own. It, it's important that she get her rest. Is it a psychiatric hospital? No, it's an ordinary hospital. I'll make her get well, Park. 
If I make your get well card, will you take it in for her tomorrow? I'm good, thank you. That's good. In the bus on the way to school, we passed four red cars in a row. Four? So today is a good day. Great, I'm glad. I'm going to find out who killed Wellington, because a good day is a day for projects and planning things. Who's Wellington? Wellington is a dog who used to belong to my neighbor, Mrs. Jew, who is our friend, but he is dead now because somebody killed him by putting a guard aboard through. And then I found him, and then the police was like that I killed him, but I had him. And then he tried to touch me, and then I hit him, and then I had to go to the police station. Gosh. And I'm going to find out who killed him and make it a project, even though Father told me not to. Did he? Yes. I see. I don't always do what I'm told. Why? Because when people tell you what to do, it is usually confusing and does not make sense. For example, people often say, be quiet, but they don't tell you how long to be quiet for. No. Why did your father tell you not to try to find out who killed Wellington? I don't know. Well, if your father has told you not to do something, then maybe you shouldn't do it. Mm. Anyway, we're meant to be writing stories today, so why don't you write about what happened to Wellington? Okay, I will. Christopher, I'm... I'm so sorry. Your mother's died. She had a heart attack. It was very unexpected. What kind of heart attack? I don't know what kind of heart attack it was. Now's not the time to be asking me those sorts of questions, Christopher. It was probably an aneurysm. I'm sorry, Christopher. I'm so sorry. That evening, I went round to Mrs. Shears' house and knocked on the door and waited for her to answer me. What are you doing here? I wanted to come and tell you that I didn't kill Wellington, and also I want to find out who did. Christopher, I really don't think I want to see you right now. Do you know who killed Wellington? If you don't go now, I'll call the police again. Reverend Peters, where is heaven? I'm sorry, Christopher? In our universe, whereabouts is it exactly? It's not in our universe. It's another kind of place, altogether. There isn't another place outside our universe, Reverend Peters. There isn't another kind of place altogether. Except, there might be if you go through a black hole. But a black hole is what is called a singularity, which means it's impossible to know what is on the other side. Because the gravity of black hole is so big that even electromagnetic waves like light can't get out of it. And electromagnetic waves is how we find out information about things which are far away. And if heaven was on the other side of a black hole, the dead people would have to be fired into space on a rocket to get there. And they aren't, or people would notice. Well, when I say heaven is outside our universe, it's really just a matter of space. I suppose what it really means is that they are with God. But where is God? Christopher, let's talk about this on another day when I have more time. The next day was Saturday. And there's not much to do on a Saturday unless Father takes me on an outing to the guard center or to the boating lake. But on this Saturday, England were playing Romania football, which meant we weren't going on an outing because Father wanted to watch the match on television. So I made a decision. I decided to go out on my own. I decided to do some detection. I do not like talking to strangers, so talking to the people on our street was going to be brave. But if you're going to do detective work, you have to be brave. So I had no choice. Can I help you? Do you know who killed Wellington? Who are you? I'm Christopher Boone from number 36, and I know you. You're Mr. Thompson. I'm Mr. Thompson's brother. Do you know who killed Wellington? Who's Wellington? Mrs. Shears' dog. Mrs. Shears is from number 39. Someone killed her dog? With a fork. Good lord. A garden fork. Oh. Do you know who killed her? I have an authority coil. Did you see anything suspicious on Thursday evening? Look, kid, do you really think you should go around asking questions like this? Yes, I do, because I want to find out who killed Wellington, and I am writing a book about it. Well, 
I was in Colchester on Thursday, so you're asking the wrong book. Thank you for helping with my investigation. It's Christopher, isn't it? Yes, it is. Did you know he killed Wellington? No, no, I don't. I'm sorry. Did you see anything suspicious on Thursday evening which might be a clue? Like what? Like strangers or the sound of people arguing. Perhaps you should be talking to your father about this. I can't talk to my father about this because he told me to stay out of other people's business. Well, maybe he has a point, Christopher. So you don't know anything which might be a clue? I don't. You take care, young man. Thank you for helping me with my investigation. Do you know who killed Wellington? The policemen really are getting younger, aren't they? Ah! <laughs> Two, three, Do you know anything about Wellington getting killed? I heard about it yesterday. Dreadful, dreadful. Do you know who killed him? No, I don't. Somebody must know because the person who killed Wellington knows that they killed Wellington. Unless they were a loony person and didn't know what they were doing. Or unless they had amnesia. You're Christopher, aren't you? Yes. We haven't talked before, have we? No, I don't talk to strangers, but I'm doing detective work. Now I see you every morning when I'm walking my dog, going to school on your school bus. It's very nice of you to come by and say hello, even if it's only because you're doing detective work. Thank you. I have a grandson your age. I'm 15 years, and 15 years, and three months, and three days. Well, almost your age. You don't have a dog, do you? No. You'd probably like a dog, wouldn't you? I have a rat. He's called Toby. Oh. Most people don't like rats because they think they carry strange diseases like bubonic plague. But that's only because they lived in sewers and were stowed away on ships coming from foreign countries where there were strange diseases. But rats are very clean. Do you want to come in for tea? I don't go into other people's houses. Well, maybe I can bring some tea out here. Do you like lemonade? I only like orange. Luckily, I have some of that as well. And what about... Battenberg. I don't know because I don't know what Battenberg is. It's a type of cake. Uh, it has marzipan icing around the edge. Is it a long cake with a square cross section that can be divided into equally sized alternatively colored squares? Yes, I think you could probably describe it like that. I think I'd like the pink squares, but not the yellow squares, because I don't like yellow. And I don't know what marzipan is, so I don't know whether I'll like that. I'm afraid marzipan is yellow, too. Perhaps I should bring out some cookies instead. Do you like cookies? Yes, some sorts of cookies. I'll get a selection. She moved slowly because she was an old lady, and she was inside the house for more than six minutes. And I started to get nervous because I didn't know her well enough to know if she was telling the truth about orange and Battenberg. And I was worried she might be ringing the police. And then I would get in more trouble because of the caution. So I walked away. Why would you kill a dog? I wouldn't. I think you would only kill a dog if A, you hated the dog, B, you were a lunatic, or C, because you wanted to make Mrs. Shears sad. I don't know anybody who hated Wellington. So if it was A, it's probably a stranger. I don't know any lunatics either. So if it was B, it was also probably a stranger. Right. But most murders are committed by someone known to the victim. In fact, you are most likely to be murdered by a member of your own family on Christmas Day. Is that a fact? Yes, actually, it's a fact. Oh. Therefore, Wellington was most likely murdered by someone known to him. I only know one person who didn't like Mrs. Shears, and that is Mr. Shears, who 
who divorced Mrs. Shu and left her to live somewhere else, and who knew Wellington very well indeed. This means that Mr. Shears is my prime suspect. Christopher. I'm going to find out more about Mr. Shears. Mr. Boone, no one has ever taken an SAT examination in the school before. He can be the first, then. I don't know if we have the facilities in the school to allow him to do that. Then get the facilities. I can't treat Christopher differently to any other student. Why? Because then everyone would want to be treated differently. So? He would set a precedent. Christopher can always take his SATs later, when he's 18, which is, after all, the age everyone else takes their SATs. Christopher's got a bad enough deal already, don't you think? This is the one thing he's really good at. Maybe we should talk about this later. Maybe on our own. Are there things you need to say to me that you're too embarrassed to say in front of Christopher? No, it's not that. Say them now, then. Christopher took an SAT that he would have to have a member of staff, a supervisor, looking after him on his own in a separate room. I'll pay for it. Here, they can do it after school. Here, this is 50 quid. Is that enough? Mr. Boone. I'm not taking no for an answer. Where have you been? I have been out. I've just gotten a call from Mrs. Shears. What were you doing poking around her garden? I was doing detective work, trying to figure out who killed Wellington. Jesus, Christopher. How many, have, how many times do I have to tell you? I told you to keep your nose out of other people's business. I think Mr. Shears probably killed Wellington. I will not have that name mentioned in this house. Why? That man is evil. Does that mean he might have killed Wellington? God help me. Okay, Christopher. I'm going to say this once and for the last time. Look at me when I'm talking to you, for God's sakes. Look at me. You are not to go around asking Mrs. Shears who killed that bloody dog. You are not to go around asking anybody who killed that bloody dog. You are not to go around trespassing into other people's gardens. You are to stop this ridiculous bloody detective game right now. I'm going to make you promise me, Christopher, and you know what it means when I make you promise. I think I would make a very good astronaut. Yes, mate. You probably would. To be a good astronaut, you have to be intelligent, and I'm intelligent. You have to be good at understanding how machines work, and I'm also good at understanding how machines work. You would also have to be someone who would like being on their own in a tiny spacecraft, thousands and thousands of miles away from the surface of the Earth, and not get panicked, or homesick, or claustrophobia, or insane. And I really like little spaces, so long as there's no one else in them with me. I noticed. Sometimes, when I want to be on my own, I go into the laundry room and slide in beside the boiler and pull the door closed behind me. And I sit there and I think for hours. And it makes me feel very calm. So I'd have to be an astronaut on my own, or on my own part of the spacecraft that no one else could come into. And there are no yellow things or brown things on a spacecraft. So that would be okay too. And I'd have to talk to people from Mission Control, but we would do that through a radio link-up or TV monitor. So it wouldn't be like talking to real people that are strangers but like it would be like playing a computer game. Which you like. And also I wouldn't get homesick at all because I'd be surrounded by lots of things I like, which are machines and computers in outer space. And I would be able to look out the tiny window in the spacecraft and know that there's no one else near me for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. What? Can you please, mate, can you just give it a rest? And know that there was no one around me for thousands and thousands of miles, which is what, what I pretend sometimes at night in the summer when I lie on the grass and look up at the sky and put my hands on the sides of my face so that I can't see the fence or the chimney or the clothesline, and all I could see would be stars. And stars are the places where all the molecules that life is made of were created billions of years ago. For example, all of the iron in your blood that keeps you from being anemic was created in the star. And I would like it if I could take Toby with me too. 
and they might be allowed, because they sometimes do take animals into space for experiments. So if I could think of an experiment for a rat that doesn't hurt the rat, then maybe I could let them let me take Toby into space. But even if I couldn't, I would still go, because it would be a dream come true. Father said. I see, that's a pity. So the book is finished. Well, you could still be really proud of what you've written so far because, well, just great. It's not a proper book. Why not? I never found out who killed Wellington, so the murderer is still at large. Not all murderers are solved and not all murderers are caught. Father said. Then Mr. Shears was an evil man, and I was never to mention his name in the house again. Do you know why he said that? No. no, but if your father's told you not to do something, then I think you shouldn't do it. What happened to you the other day? I came back out again and you've gone. I had to eat all the biscuits myself. I was looking forward to our little chat. I don't do chatting. I don't like it. No, I don't suppose you do. Do you like computers? Yes, I like computers. I have a computer in my room. I know. I can see you sitting at your computer in your bedroom sometimes when I look across the street. And I like maths and looking after Toby. And also like outer space and being on my own. I bet you're very good at maths, aren't you? I am. I'm going to take the SAT next month and I'm going to get a 1600. Really? The SAT? Yes, I'm the first person from my school to take an SAT because it is a special school. All the other children at my school are stupid, except I'm not meant to call them that, even though that is what they are. Well, I am very impressed, and I hope you do get a 1600. I will. And the other thing I know about you is your favorite color is not yellow. No, and it's not brown either. My favorite color is red and metal colored. Do you know Mr. Shears? Not really, no. I mean, I knew him well enough to say hello to, but I didn't know him very well. I think he worked in the National Westminster Bank in town. Father said he was an evil man. Do you know why he said that? Perhaps it would be best not to talk about these things, Christopher. Why? Well, because maybe your father is right and you shouldn't go around asking questions about this. Why not? Well, because obviously he is going to find it quite upsetting. Why is he going to find it quite upsetting? I think you know why your father doesn't like Mr. Shears very much. Did Mr. Shears kill mother? Kill her? Yes, did he kill mother? No, no, of course he didn't. Kill your mother? But did he give her stress so that she died of a heart attack? I honestly don't know what you're talking about, Christopher. Or did he hurt her so that she had to go into hospital? Did she have to go into hospital? Yes, and it wasn't very serious at first, but she had a heart attack when she was in hospital. Oh my goodness. And she died. Oh my goodness. Oh, Christopher, I am so sorry. I never realized. Why did you say, I think you know why your father doesn't like Mr. Shears very much? Oh, dear, dear, dear. Christopher, look, perhaps we'd best take a little walk together. This is not really the place to be talking about these things. I am going to tell you something, and you must promise me not to tell your father that I told you this. Why? Christopher, please, just... Trust me. I promise. Your mother, before she died, was very good friends with Mr. Shears. I know. No, Christopher, I'm not so sure you do. See, when I say that they were friends, I mean that they were very good friends very very good friends 
Do you mean that they were doing sex? Yes. Christopher, that is what I mean. I'm so sorry, Christopher. I really didn't mean to say anything that was going to upset you. Is that why Mr. Shears left Mrs. Shears? Because he was doing sex with someone else while he was still married to Mrs. Shears? Yes, I expect so. I think I should go now. Are you okay, Christopher? I can't be on my own with you because you are a stranger. I'm not a stranger, Christopher. I'm a friend. Did you tell your father about this? No. Are you going to tell your father about this? No. Did it make you sad to find this out? Find what out? Did it make you sad to find out that your mother and Mr. Shears had an affair? No. Are you telling the truth? Yes, I always tell the truth. It didn't make you feel sad because Mother is dead. So I would be feeling sad about something that isn't real and doesn't exist, and that would be stupid. What was your mother like? Do you remember much about her? I remember the 20th of July, 2008. I was nine years old. It was a Sunday. We were on a holiday in a place called Cornwall. We were on a beach in a place called Polcaro. Mother was wearing shorts made out of denim and a stripy blue swimming costume. And she was smoking menthol cigarettes, which were mint flavored. And she wasn't swimming. She was sunbathing on a towel, which had red and purple stripes. And she was reading a book by Georgette Payer called The Masqueraders. And then she finished sunbathing and went up from the water. And she said, Bloody Nora, it's cold. Bloody Nora, it's cold. And she said, I should come and swim too, but I didn't like swimming because I don't like taking my clothes off. And she said, I should roll my trousers up and walk into the water a little way. So I did. And mother said, Christopher, look, it's lovely. And she jumped backwards and disappeared under the water. And I thought a shark had eaten her. her. And I screamed. And she stood up out of the water and came over to where I was standing and held up her right hand and spread out her fingers. Come on, Christopher, touch my hand. Come on now, stop screaming, touch my hand. Listen to me, Christopher, it's okay. You can do it, it's okay. There aren't any sharks in Cornwall. I was walking in the park with Mrs. Alexander when she stopped and said, I'm going to tell you something that you must promise not to tell your father. Your mother, when she was alive, was very good friends with Mr. Shears. And other times, she used to say, If I hadn't married your father, I think I'd be living in a little farmhouse in the south of France. There's someone called Jean. And he'd be, oh, he'd be a local handyman, you know, painting and decorating for people, gardening, building fences. And we'd have a French bulldog in the veranda with the biggest growing over it. And there'd be a field of sunflowers at the bottom of the garden in a little town on the hill in the distance. And we'd sit outside in the evening and drink red wine and smoke French cigarettes and watch the sun go down. What is this? It's a book I'm writing. Is this true? Have you been talking to Mrs. Alexander? Yes. Jesus, Christopher. How stupid are you? What did I tell you, Christopher? Not to mention Mr. Shears' name in our house. And not to go around asking Mrs. Shears or anyone else about who killed that bloody dog. And not to go trespassing on other people's gardens. And stop this ridiculous bloody detective game. Except I haven't done any of those things. I just asked Mrs. Alexander about Mr. Shears because I was doing chatting. Don't give me that, bollocks. You knew exactly what you were doing. I've read the book, remember? What else did I say, Christopher? I don't know. Come on, memory man. Not to go around poking your nose into other people's business. And what do you do? You go around poking your nose into other people's business. You go around digging up the past and sharing it with every Tom, Dick, and Harry you run into. What am I going to do with you, Christopher? What am I going to do? 
I was just chatting with Mrs. Alexander. I wasn't doing detective work. I asked you to do one thing for me, Christopher. One thing. I didn't want to talk to Mrs. Alexander. It was Mrs. Alexander. I need a drink. Sorry I hit you. I didn't mean to hurt you, Christopher. I I love you. Don't ever forget that. I worry because I don't want to see you get into trouble. And because I don't want to see you get hurt. Where's my book? Christopher, do you understand that I love you? Is it in the dustbin at the front of the house? The next day, when I got home from school, Father was still at work. So I went outside and looked inside the dustbin, but the book wasn't there. I was worried that Father had taken the book into his van and driven to the dump and put it in one of the big bins there, but I didn't want that to be true because then I would never see it again. One other possibility was that Father had hidden the book somewhere inside the house, so I decided to do some detection to see if I could find it. I started by looking in the kitchen. Then, I detected in the laundry room. Then, I detected in the dining room. Then, I detected in the living room, where I found the missing wheel to my metal fit Airfix B B5109 G6 model airplane under the sofa. Then, I went upstairs, but I didn't do any detection in my own room because I reasoned that Father wouldn't hide something from me in my own room, unless he was being very clever and doing what is called a double bluff, like in a real murder mystery novel. So I decided that I would only look in my room if I couldn't find the book anywhere else. Then, I detected in the bathroom. But the only place to look was the medicine cabinet, and there's nothing in there which meant that the last room to detect in was Father's bedroom. I started by looking under the bed. There were five pairs of shoes, a comb with lots of hair in it, a wooden spoon, a chocolate chip cookie, a magazine called Men Only, a pair of underpants from TJ Maxx with a little bit of pee left in them, a Scooby-Doo tie, but not my book. Then I looked in the drawers on either side of the dressing table. But these only contain aspirin, and nail clippers, and batteries, and dental floss, and tissues, and a stir false tooth, and a tampon, but my book wasn't there either. Then, I looked in the wardrobe. Inside the wardrobe, there was a large plastic toolbox full of tools for DIY, which means doing it yourself. But I could see these without opening up the toolbox because the toolbox was made of a transparent gray plastic. Then I saw there was another box underneath the toolbox. This other box was an old cardboard box called a shirt box because people used to buy shirts in them. And when I opened up the shirt box, my book was inside. And then I heard Father's van pulling up outside and I knew I had to think fast and be clever. I heard Father shutting the door of the van and that is when I saw the envelope. It was an envelope addressed to me underneath my book inside the shirt box. It said, Christopher Boone, 36 Randolph Street, Swindon, Wiltshire. And then I noticed there were lots of envelopes. And this was interesting and confusing. And then I noticed how the words Christopher and Swindon were written. They were written like this. Christopher, Swindon. I only know three people who do little circles over the eyes instead of dots. One of them is Siobhan. One of them is Mr. Loxley, who used to teach at the school. And one of them was Mother. Hello, Christopher. Hello. So, what have you been up to, young man? 
Today, we did Life Skills with Siobhan, which is using money and public transport. And I had tomato soup for lunch and three apples. And I practiced some maths in the afternoon and went for a walk in the park with Mrs. Peters and collected leaves for, make, for making collages. Excellent. So what do you fancy for chow tonight? Baked beans and broccoli. <laughs> I think that can be arranged. I'm just going to go put up the shelves in the living room. I'll make a lot of noise, I'm afraid, so if you want to watch television, we'll have to shift you upstairs. I'll go and be on my own in my room. Good man. So I went up to my room, and when I was in the room, I shut the door behind me. And I took out the envelope and opened it up. Inside was a letter. This is what was on the letter. 451C, Chapter Road, Williston, London. NW25NG 0208-887-8907 Dear Christopher, I was looking through some old photos last night, which made me sad. And then I found a photo of you playing with the train set we bought for you a couple Christmases ago. And that made me happy because it was one of the really good times we had together. Do you remember how you used to play with it all day? And you refused to go to bed at night because you were still playing with it. And we taught you about train timetables. And you made a train timetable, and you made the train run on time. And there was a little wooden station, too. And we taught you how people who wanted to go on the train went to the station and bought a ticket and got on the train. And you played with it for weeks and weeks and weeks. I liked remembering that a lot. You haven't written to me yet, so I know you're probably still angry with me. I'm sorry, Christopher, but I still love you. And I would love it if you were able to write me a letter. I hope you do not stay angry with me forever. Lots of love, your mom. I was really confused. Mother had never written me a letter before, and Mother had never lived in London. When I started writing my book, I only had one mystery to solve, but now I had two. I decided that I wouldn't think about it anymore that night because I didn't have enough information and could easily leap to the wrong conclusions. How was school? It was good, thank you. Joseph Fleming took his trousers off and went to the toilet all over the floor of the changing room. And then he started to eat it from Mr. Davis' soccer food. Good old Mr. Davis, eh? Joseph eats everything. Does he? He once ate one of those little blocks of blue disinfectant which hang inside the toilet. And he once ate a 50-pound note from his mother's wallet. And he eats string and rubber band and tissues and writing paper and plastic forks. And also, he bangs his chin and screams a lot. I know how he feels. Listen, Christopher, I've got to go out. Why? A lady's called. She's had a problem with her cellar. It's flooded. Is it an emergency? It is. It is raining very heavily. Yes, it is. The rain looks like white spark. Terrific. I like looking at the rain. Terrific. I like it because it makes you think how all the water in the world is connected. Is it? This water. This rain has evaporated actually like from somewhere like maybe the Gulf of Mexico maybe, or Baffin Bay, and now it's falling in front of the house. I'll have my mobile on me in case there's an emergency. Yes. So if you need me, you can call me. Yes. Christopher, behave yourself, lad. Yeah. So I went upstairs and into his room, and I opened up the wardrobe, and took the toolbox off the top of the shirt box and opened up the shirt box. I counted out the letters. There were 43 of them. They were all addressed to me in the same handwriting. I took one out and opened it up. It said, 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW25NG0208, 887-8907. Dear Christopher, I said that I was going to explain why I left when I had the time to do it properly. 
Now I have lots of time. So I'm sitting on the sofa here with this letter and the radio on, and I'm going to try and explain. I was not a very good mother, Christopher. Maybe if things had been different, maybe if you had been different, I might have been better at it. But that's just the way things turned out. I'm not like your father. Your father is a much more patient person. He just gets on with things, and if things upset him, he doesn't let it show. But that's not the way I am. And there's nothing I can do to change that. Do you remember once when we were shopping in town together, and we went into Bentoles, and it was really crowded, and we had to get a Christmas present for Grandma? And you were frightened because of everyone in the shop. And you crouched down and put your hands over your ears. And you were in the way of everyone. So I got cross because I don't like shopping during Christmas either. And I told you to behave. And I tried to pick you up and move you. But you shouted and you knocked the mixers off the shelf. And there was a big crash and everyone turned around to see what was going on. And there were boxes and bits of string and bits of broken bowl on the floor. And everyone was staring. And I saw that you'd wet yourself. And I was so cross and I just wanted to get you out of the shop. But you wouldn't let me touch you. And we just had to wait until you stopped screaming. I remember that night. I cried and cried and cried. And your father was really nice about it at first. He made you suffer and put you to bed and said that these things happen and it would be okay. But I just said I couldn't take it anymore. And eventually he got cross and said I was being stupid, told me I should get myself together. And I hit him, which was wrong. But I was so upset. We had a lot of arguments like that. And eventually we stopped speaking to each other because we knew it would always end in an argument. And that was when I started spending a lot of time with Roger. And that's when I started spending a lot of time with Roger. I know you might not understand any of this, but I wanted to try and explain so that you knew. And we had a lot in common. And then we realized we were in love with one another. I said I couldn't leave you. And he was sad about that, but he understood that you were really important to me. And I got cross. And I threw the food across the room, which I know I shouldn't have done. You grabbed the chopping board and threw it at my foot, broke my toes. And afterwards, at home, your father and I got into a huge argument. I couldn't walk properly for a month. Do you remember when your father had to look after you? I remember looking at the two of you and seeing you together and thinking how you really were different with him, much calmer. And it made me so sad because it was like you didn't need me at all. I think then I realized that you were probably better off without me at home. And that's when Roger asked if I wanted to come with him. And it broke my heart. But eventually I decided that it would be better for all of us if I just went. And so I said yes. I meant to say goodbye. But when I rang up your father, he said I couldn't, he was really angry. He said I couldn't, he said I couldn't talk to you. He didn't know what to do. He said I was being selfish and that I was never to step foot in the house again. And so I haven't. I wonder if you can understand any of this. I know it must be difficult for you. I thought that what I was doing was best for all of us. I never meant to hurt you. I used to have dreams where everything would get better. Do you remember how you said you wanted to be an astronaut? Well, I used to have dreams where you were an astronaut. And you'd be on the television. And I thought, that's my son. I wonder what it is you want to be now. Has it changed? Are you still doing maths? 
I hope you are. Loads and loads of love. Your mother. Christopher? 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 Christopher, what are you? These are... Oh God. I didn't know what to say. I was such a mess. I said she had to go into hospital because I didn't know how to explain it. And and once I'd said that, I, I couldn't change it. It just got out of control. Good. Jesus, Christopher, you got sick all over yourself. Let's sit you up and get your clothes off and get you into bed. I'm going to have to touch you, but it's going to be all right. Look, maybe I shouldn't say this, but you need to know that you can trust me. Life is hard, you know, it's, it's bloody difficult telling the truth all the time. But I want you to know that I'm trying. And you've got to know that I'm going to tell the truth to you from now on. About everything. Because, because if you don't tell the truth now, then later on it hurts even more. So, I killed Wellington, Christopher. Just let me explain. When your mom left, Eileen, Mrs. Shears, she was very good to me. She helped me through a very difficult time, and I'm not sure I would have made it without her. And you know how she was always coming over, popping in and out to see if we needed anything, if we were okay? Well, look, Christopher, I'm going to try and make this as simple as I can. I thought we were friends, and I guess I thought wrong. But she said some things, some things that I'm not going to say to you because they aren't nice and they hurt. And I think she cared more about that dog than she cared about us. And maybe that isn't so stupid looking back. Maybe it's easier to live on your own looking after some stupid old mutt than spending your life with actual human beings. I mean... Let's face it, buddy, we're not exactly low maintenance, are we? But we had a fight, quite a few fights, to be honest, and after this one particularly nasty little dust up, she chucked me out of the house. And you know what that dog was like. Nice as a pie one minute, walk over, tickle its stomach, and sink its teeth into your leg the next. Well, we were fighting in the garden, and after she threw me out, it was there waiting for me. And I know, maybe if I'd have just kicked it, it would have gone away, but... I don't know, Christopher, when the red mist comes down, it was like everything that I had bottled up in me for two years just exploded. And you know what that's like. I mean, we're not so different about that. But... I never meant for it to turn out like this, and I never meant to hurt you. Look, let's call it for tonight. You get some sleep, and I'll get some sleep, and we'll talk about it in the morning. It's going to be okay, I promise. Two, four, eight. His father had murdered Wellington. That meant he could murder me too. I had to get out of the house. I had to make a decision. 
I did this by thinking about all the things that I could do and deciding whether they were the right thing to do or not. Stay home. I decided I couldn't stay home. Please. No, I can't live in the house with you anymore because it is dangerous. And I can't go and live with you because you can't look after me when school's closed. I can try it. No, because you're a teacher, not a friend or a member of my family. You could go and live with your Uncle Terry. No, you live in Sunderland. I don't know how to get to Sunderland. Get a train. Get the train. And also, you smoke cigarettes and you stroke my hair. You're not a friend either. I think I am a friend. No. And I can't stay in your house and use your toilets because you use them and you're a stranger. I'm not really a stranger. Yes. Four fifty one C Chapter Road, London, NW two five NG. Four fifty one C Chapter Road, London, NW two five NG. Four fifty one C Chapter Road, London, NW two five NG. 451C Chapter Road. London. NW25NG.
something. Mrs. Gascoigne asked me to ask everybody if we'd like to make some kind of performance for school this year. We can make a play and everyone should have a part in it. I think it would be a good thing for everyone to have a part in it. I was wondering if you would like to turn your book into a play. No. Oh, I think it could be really good fun, Christopher. I think it could be really good fun. No, it's a book and it's for me and not for everybody, just for me. But I think people would find it really interesting what would happen if some people took parts of your book and started acting it out. No, I don't like acting because it is pretending that something is real when it's not really real at all. So it is like a kind of lie. But people like stories. Some people find things that are kind of true and things that are totally made up. You like your Sherlock Holmes stories and you know he's not a real person, don't you? Look, I would help you if you're worried about that. No. I think I'd rather like to take the part of a policeman. You're too old to be a policeman. Christopher! Christopher! Can you look after Toby for me? Oh. He needs special pellets and you can buy them from a pet shop. And he needs fresh water every day too. Why do you need someone to look after Toby for you, Christopher? I'm going to live with mother. I thought you told me your mother was dead. I thought she was dead, but she was still alive. And father lied to me. And also he killed Wellington. Is your mother here? No, mother is in London. So you're going to go to London on your own? I think I'm going to do that, yes. Where is your father at the moment, Christopher? I don't know. Well, perhaps we better give him a ring and see if we can get in touch with him. I'm sure he's very worried, and I'm sure this has all been a dreadful misunderstanding. Where can I buy a map? A map of what? I don't know. Where do you need to get to? I'm going to the train station. You don't need a map to get to the train station. You can see it right over there. No, I can't. There. That building. The signal point at the top. British rail sign on the other end. Station's at the bottom of that. Do you mean the stripy building with the horizontal windows that you can see poking out over those houses? That's the one. How do I get to that building? Okay. Get out there. I knew that the train station was somewhere near. And if something is nearby, you can find it by moving in a spiral. Walking clockwise and taking every right turn until you come back to the road you've already walked on. Then taking the next left, then taking every right turn, and so on. And that was how I found the station. Parking subject to the railway bylaw section 219 of the Transport Act 2000. Warning! CCTV in operation. Great Western. Hold here the ladder. Caution! Wet floor. Your 50 P will keep a premature baby alive for 1.8 seconds. Transforming travel. Refreshingly different. It's delicious, it's creamy, it's only £1.30. Hot chocolate. Zero eight seven zero seven 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 six seven six. 776 No smoking. Fine tea. Automatic fire door. Keep clear. Air condition. Reserve parking. Open as usual this way. No smoking. No alcohol. Dogs must be carried. RVP. Dogs must be carried. LSB. A perfect blend. Royal Mail. Monday to Friday, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Dogs must be carried at all times. Special one shopper. Superb coffee. Step free access. Superb coffee. Cash dispensers. Superb coffee. Dogs must be carried at all times. Are you all right? No. Are you all right, young man? No. You're looking a bit worse for wear. The lady at the cafe said that when she tried talking to you, you were in a complete trance. What's your name? Christopher Boone. Where do you live? 36 Randolph Street. What are you doing here? I need to sit down and be quiet and think. Okay, let's keep it simple. What are you doing at the railway station? I'm going to see Mother. Mother? Yes, Mother. When's your train? I don't know. She lives in London. I don't know when there's a train to London. So you don't live with your mother then? No, but I'm going to. So where does your mother live? In London. Yes, but where in London? 451C Chapter Road, London, NW25NG. What is that? 
That's Toby, my pet rat. A pet rat? Yes, he's very clean and hasn't got bubonic plague. Well, that's very reassuring. Yes. Have you got a ticket? No. So, how precisely were you planning on getting to London then? I have a credit card. Is this your card? No, it's father's. Father's? Yes, father's. Okay. He told me the number. It's three five five. Why don't you and I take a stroll to the cash machine? Hey. Okay? You, you mustn't touch me. Why would I want to touch you? I don't know. Well, neither do I. Because I got a caution for hitting a policeman, even though I didn't mean to hurt him. And if I do it again, it'll be a lot worse because of the caution. Please insert your card. You're serious, aren't you? Yes. Enter your personal identification number. You lead the way. Where? Back by the ticket office. Please enter amount. 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. How much does it cost to get a ticket to London? About 20 quid. Please wait. Your transaction is being processed. Is that pounds? Christ alive! Yeah, that's 20 pounds. Please take your card and wait for your cash. Where do I get a ticket to the train from? Sam. I want to go to London. If you don't mind. I want to go to London. Single or return? What does single or return mean? Would you like to go one way or would you like to come back? I, I'd like to stay there when I get there. For how long? Until I go to university. Single then. That'll be 17 pounds. When is the train to London? Platform one. Five minutes. Where's platform one? Through the underpass and up the stairs. You'll see the signs. Underpass means tunnel, Christopher. Imagine a big red line across the floor that starts at your feet and goes through the tunnel. And now walk along that line. And keep the rhythm in your head because that helps, doesn't it? Like when you're doing music or when you're doing drumming. Left, right, left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Right. Is this the train to London? Christopher, caught you just in time. You can't your father at the police station. He's been looking for you. Ah! Okay. Now let's not get over excited here. I'm going to take you back to the police station. And you, me, and your dad. I'm going to sit down and have a little chat about who's going where. Have you arrested father? Arrested him? What for? He killed the dog. The dog was called Wellington. Well, we can talk about that there as well. For now, young man, I think you've done enough adventuring for one day. Mm. Now listen, you little monkey! Ah! <sighs> Don't move. Rob, it's me, Nigel. Stuck on the bloody train. Yeah. Don't even look. The next stop is at Big Pot Parkway. So, if you can get someone to meet me with a car, cheers. Tell those old men we've got him, but it's gonna take a while. Okay? Great. Let's find ourselves a seat. Park yourself. You're a bloody handful, you are. Jeez. I see everything. Most other people are lazy. They do what is called glancing which is the same word for bumping off something and carrying on in the same direction. And the information in their head is really simple. For example, if they're on a train, looking out a window, onto the countryside, it might be, one, There are some cows in the distance. Two, It is sunny with a few clouds. Three, There are some flowers in the grass. Four, There is a village in the distance. And then they would stop noticing anything, because they would be thinking something else, like, I wonder if Julie has given birth yet. Or? 
I'm worried that I might have left the oven on. Or? I really want a bag of cheesy Doritos. But if I am sitting on a train, looking out a window onto the countryside, I notice everything. Like, one, there are 19 cows in the field, 15 of which are black and white, and four of which are brown and white. Two, there are three different visible nimbo stratus clouds. Three, there's a village in the distance, which has 31, no, 32 visible houses, and a plastic bag in the head. No, two, and a squished Coca-Cola can with a snail in it. I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, five different types of grass. There are the cows. I can see three, no, four different. There's a wind blowing from a, there is a, there is a Coca-Cola. There's the snail, the snail, the cows, the cows are facing. Christ, you're wetting yourself. For God's sake, go to the bloody toilet, will you? But I'm on a train. They do have toilets on trains, you know. Where's the toilet on the train? Through those doors there. But I'll be keeping an eye on you, you understand? No. Just go to the bloody toilet. <laughs> Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen. 19. Christopher! 22, 23, Christopher! 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, 31, they come like a death fairy. They got like a train over or something. Well, we have been hacking. We should kidnap him. He could be our elf mascot. Come on, shifty, you stupid idiot. Bollocks, that's not my bag. 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 I waited for nine more minutes, and no one else came past. And the train was really quiet, and I didn't move again, so I realized that the train had stopped. And I knew that the last stop on the train was London, so I got off the train. Right, left, right, left, 
right. Is this London? Is this London? I needed it. How do I get to 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW25NG? Sorry, it's that? It's 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW25NG. <laughs> or sometimes you can write that as 451C, Chapter Road, Willesden, London, NW25NG. Take the tube to Willesden Junction. Or Willesden Green. It's gotta be around there somewhere. What is the tube? Are you for real? See the staircase with the escalator? See the sign? It says underground. Take the paper blue line to Wilson Junction or the Jubilee to Wilson Green. You okay? Christopher, don't do this. Get away from me. You won't be able to. I'm doing really well. Where's your Swiss Army knife? Have you lost it? It's in my pocket. Where's the red line? See, it's disappeared, hasn't it? How are you going to find the Jubilee line? You don't even know what an escalator is, do you? It, it's a moving staircase. You step onto it, it carries you down. It's funny, look! Stop laughing. It's like something out of science fiction. I'm worried about you. You're lying. You killed Wellington. Where are you going? To watch the people. You go up to the black machine. You look at where you want to go. You put your money in. You haven't got any money. I have. I stole your card. You little... You go up to the great gate. You put your ticket in the slot. There's no Jubilee line. How are you going to get to Williston Green? There's a Baker New line. Look, I can take that to Williston Junction. Come home. No, Swindon's not my home anymore. My home is 451C, Chapter Road, London, NW25NG. Stay behind the yellow line. I know. The train's coming. It'll be really noisy. I know. It will really scare you. I know. Don't let it. Watch the people. Watch how they get on and how they get off. Yes. Figure it out. Get the rhythm right. Train coming. Train stopped. Doors open. Train going. Silence. Train coming. Train stopped. Doors open. Train going. Silence. Train coming. Train stopped. Doors open, train going, silence. Train coming, train stop. Doors open, train going, silence. Train coming, train stop. Doors open, train going, silence. Train coming, train stop. Doors open. Toby! Toby! Toby, where are you? Toby? Toby, what are you doing down there? Get back up here this instant. I'm warning you. Right. I'm coming down there, Toby. And when I catch you, I'm going to be very cross. Oi, what are you doing? I'm finding Toby, my pet rat. Get out of there, for goodness sake. Toby, it's filthy down here. You'll get so dirty. Oh, my days. What is he doing? What does it look like he's doing? Call somebody. Get somebody. Don't just stand there. Mate. Please get back up here. I can't get back up here. My rat is on there. What? May, please. You are going to get yourself killed. You're going to have to go down there. May, what has this got to do with me? He's a kid. You can't let him get hit. I can see he's a kid. I can tell he's a kid by bloody well looking at him. May, get your arse up here now. Toby, stop being so difficult. I can't believe this is happening. This is ridiculous. May, get back up here now. <gasps> Don't panic! I found him! Help him then, Muppet! Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! What do you think you were playing at? I was finding Toby, my pet rat. Bloody Nora! Is he okay? Him? Oh, thanks a bundle! A pet rat? Oh, shoot! My train! Shoot! Are you okay? Is there anything I can do to help you? Get away from me! I have a switch army knife! There's a saw blade! It could cut someone's finger off! Okay, gonna take that as a no. Doors open! Is this train going to Williston Junction? There are 53,963 holiday cottages in Scandinavia and Germany. Antibiotics. Is this train going to Willis and Dutch in grade 435? Well, if you cut in town fair, you will have to show a valid ticket for your entire journey. Discover gold, then home. Is this train going to Willis and Dutch in? PVIC. PVIC. Obstructing the doors can be dangerous. 
B or V? Con IV. Is this train going to Williston Junction? Talk to the world. Warwick Avenue. Maida Vale. Kilburn's Park. Queens Park. Kensal Green. Williston Junction. Where is 451C Chapter Road running? NW25NG. A to Z, map of London, 595. I'm not a walking encyclopedia. Is that the A to Z? No, it's a bloody chihuahua. Is that the A to Z? Yes, it's the A to Z. Can I buy it? 595, are you giving me the money first? I'm not having you see things. Left, right. Left, right. Left, right. Left. Right, left, right, left, right. I don't care whether you thought it was funny or not. Ju Judy, look, I'm sorry, okay? Well, perhaps you should have thought about that before you made me look like a complete idiot. You weren't in, so I waited for you. Christopher? What? Christopher! What the hell is going on here? I I'm so sorry, Christopher! I guess this means Ed's here. Where's your father, Christopher? I think he's in Swindon. Thank God for that. But how did you get here? I came on the train. Oh my God, I didn't, I didn't think I'd ever. Why are you here on your own? Christopher, you're soaking. Why don't you just stand there? Are you going to come in or are you going to stay out here all night? I'm going to live with you because father killed Wellington with a garden fork. Jumping Jack Christ. Roger, please. Come on, Christopher, let's go inside and get you dried off. Come on then, soldier, you'll catch your death out here. You follow Roger. He's hungry. Have you brought any food I can give him and some water? Are you okay, Christopher? I'm tired. I know, love. I can get you a blanket. No, don't. I've got a sleeping bag in my backpack. Will you let me help you get your clothes off? I can get you a clean t-shirt. A t-shirt, pass me a t-shirt. You're very brave. Yes. You never wrote to me. I know. Why didn't you write to me, Christopher? I, I wrote you all those letters. I kept thinking something dreadful had happened or you moved away and I would never find out where you were. Father said you were dead. What? He said you had something wrong with your heart, so you had to go into hospital. And then you had a heart attack and died. Oh my god. Oh, Christopher, I'm so sorry. Why are you doing that? Oh, bastard, that bastard! Christopher, let me hold your hand. Just once, just for me, will you? I, I won't hold it hard. I don't like people holding my hand. No? Okay. Okay. I need to speak to him. He's been through enough today already. I know, but I still need to speak to him. Christopher Boone, can you please open the door? Come on, Christopher. Christopher, love, it's all right. Just open the door, will you? Are you going to take me away? No, Christopher, he isn't. Will you let him take me away? No, I won't. Your father says you've run away. Is that right? Yes. Is this your mother? Yes. Why did you run away? Because father killed Wellington, who is a dog. So that meant that he could kill me too. So I've heard. Do you want to go back to swimming with your father, or would you like to stay here? I want to stay here. And how do you feel about that? I want to stay here. Hold on. I was asking your mother. He told Christopher I was dead. Let's let Doc get into an argument about who said what here. I just want to know whether... Of course he can stay. Huh? That just about settles things as far as I'm concerned. Are you going to take me back to Swindon? No. If your cousin turns up and causes any more trouble, you can give us a ring. Otherwise, you're going to have to sort this out amongst yourselves. I'm talking to her, whether you like it or not. Roger, don't. Just... I will not be spoken to that way in my own home. I'll speak to you however I please. You have no right to be here. He's my son, in case you've forgotten. 
Yeah, what did God, in God's name did you think you were playing at saying those things to him? You were the one that bloody left. So you decided to just wipe me out of his life altogether. Now let's just all calm down here. Well, isn't that what you wanted? I wrote to him every week. What's the use in writing to him? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I cleaned his clothes. I cooked his meals. I looked after him on weekends. I looked after him when he was ill. I took him to the doctor. I worried myself sick every time he wandered off somewhere at night. I went to school every time he was in a fight. And what did you do? You wrote him some letters? So you thought it was okay to tell him his mother was dead? Now was not the time. I'm going in there, and if you try and stop me... Christopher? Christopher, you're all right. I won't let him do anything. Christopher, I'm... I'm really sorry about the letters. I promise I'll never do anything like that ever again. I hope you know that I love you, Christopher. Mr. Boone. How are you here? Did you call him? Mr. Boone, come on, mate. Don't come on, mate, me. This is my son. I know. This can all be sorted out. Just come with me, please. Ed, you should go. He's frightened. I'll be back. I'll be back, Christopher, I promise you. You go back to sleep now. Everything's going to be all right, I promise. He can stay for a few days. He can stay as long as he needs to stay. This flat is hardly big enough for two people, let alone three. He can understand what you're saying, you know. What's he going to do? There's no school for him to go to. We both got jobs. It's bloody ridiculous. Roger, that's enough. You can stay as long as you want to stay. It was mother who gave me the milkshake. It was mother who gave me the milkshake, not you. You need to shout more loudly at him, like you're really angry with him and not just being nice. Okay. Roger, that's enough. You can stay as long as you want to stay. I have to go back to Swindon. Christopher, you've only just got here. I have to go back because I have to take my SATs. You're taking your SAT? Yes, I'm taking on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday next week. Christopher, that's really good. Yeah. But I can't see father, so I have to go back to Swindon with you. I don't know whether that's going to be possible. But I have to go. Can we talk about this another time, okay? Okay, but I have to go back to Swindon. Christopher, please. What time is it? It's seven minutes past two in the morning. I can't sleep. It's because you're afraid of Mr. Shears. You're being silly. There's nobody about. You can hear traffic. What cars are there? Uh, Fiesta, a Peugeot, a Mini Cooper, and a Ford Granada. What colors are they? Can't tell. All I can see is mixtures of orange and black, and orange and black. Look, look at what people have on their front gardens. Oh, yes! Is that a gnome? No, it's an elf, um, and a teddy bear, and a little pond, look. And an oven. I like looking at the stars. Me too. When you look at the stars, you know you're looking at stars that are thousands and thousands of miles away from the surface of the Earth. And some of the stars don't exist anymore because their light has taken so long to get to us that they are already dead or they have collapsed into red dwarves. And that makes you seem very small. And if you have difficult things in your life, it is nice to think of them as negligible, which means they are so small that you don't have to take them into account when you are calculating something. I can't see any stars here. No. It's because of all the light pollution from London. All the lights from floodlights and streetlights and car headlights and lights in buildings reflect off tiny particles in the atmosphere and get in the way of light from the stars. Christopher, I have to go. Don't. I have Christopher! To. Christopher! 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 What are you doing out here? I thought you'd gone! Oh, if you ever do that to me again, Christopher, I swear to God. I love you, but I don't know what I'll do. 
Christopher, you need to promise me you won't leave the flat on your own again. Christopher, can you promise me that? Yes. You can't trust people in London. Would you like an iced lolly? Yes, I would, please. Would you like a strawberry one? Yes, I would, please, because that's red. What's it called here? It's called Hampstead Heath. I love it. You can see all over London. Where are the planes going to? Uh, Heathrow, I think. Christopher, I rang Mrs. Gaspine. I told her you were going to take your SATs next year. Christopher, please calm down. Okay, okay. Christopher, just calm down, love. Here we are. You wanted a radio? 100 number puzzles. It's from the library. And this one is the origins of the universe. And this one, nuclear power. They're for children. Well, it's nice to know that my contribution is appreciated. Christopher, I made you a chart because you've got to eat love. It's called Slim Fast, and it's strawberry flavored. Slim Fast? Roger, quiet. If you drink 200 milliliters, I'm going to put a bronze star on the chart. I don't believe this. Roger, for God's sake, please. If you drink 400 milliliters, you get a silver star. Huh. And if you drink 600 milliliters, you get a gold star. Gold star. That's real original, I must say. You think you're so clever, don't you? Don't you ever, ever think about other people for just one second? I bet you're real pleased with yourself. Ooh. Christopher, I'm sorry, I'm really, really sorry. I promise that will never happen again. What time is it? It's four o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? I'm packing some clothes. Where's Mr. Shear? He's asleep. Come downstairs, bring Toby. Get in the car. Into Mr. Shear's car. That's right. Where are we going? We're going Wait. home. Are we going back home, you mean, in Swindon? Yes. Are we going back so I can take my SAT? What? I'm meant to be doing my SAT tomorrow. We're going back to Swindon because if we stay in London any longer, someone's going to get hurt. And I don't necessarily mean you. Now, I need you to be quiet. How long do you need me to be quiet for? Jesus, half an hour, Christopher. I need you to be quiet for half an hour. How did you get here? It's my house too, in case you've forgotten. Is your fancy man here as well? Christopher, Christopher, he's gone. You don't need to panic. Where's he gone to? He's gone to stay at a friend's house. Is he going to be arrested and go to prison? What for? For killing Wellington. I think he'll only get arrested if Mrs. Shears presses charges. What's that? It's when you tell the police to arrest someone for a little crime. They only arrest people for little crimes if you ask them to. Is killing Wellington a little crime? Yes, love. In the next few weeks, we're going to try and find a place of our own to live in. Am I going to be able to do my SAT? You're not listening to me, are you, Christopher? Yes, I am listening to what you were saying. I told you. I rang your headmistress. I told her you were in London. I said you would take it next year. But I'm here now, so I can take it. I'm sorry, Christopher. I didn't know we'd be coming back. This isn't going to help anyone. Well, look who it is. Where are we going? 
What a nerve. Strutting around here as though nothing ever happened. Ignore her, Christopher. So he's finally dumping down to you, happy? What is Mrs. Shear doing? You had it coming. Don't try and pretend that you didn't, because you did. Where are we going? Going to school. So you're Christopher's mother. That's right, and you're... I'm Siobhan. Nice to meet you. Yes, yes. It's nice to meet you, too. Hello, Christopher. Hello. Are you okay? I'm tired. He's a bit upset. Because he has AT, right? He won't sleep. He won't eat. I talked to Mrs. Gascoigne after you called. Right. She actually still has your SAT papers and the three sold envelopes on her desk. I actually still have your SAT papers in my desk. Does that mean I can still do my SAT? I think so. We were going to run Reverend Peters later this afternoon to see if he'd still be your supervisor, and Mrs. Gascoigne is going to run the examination board so that Christopher can still take it, if that's what you want. Thought I'd let you know. Let me know about what? Well, do you want to take the test? If you don't want to, it's okay. It won't be stupid or wrong or illegal. It'll just be what you want, and that'll be fine. I want to do it. How do you feel? I'm tired. How does your brain feel when you think about Max? I don't think it works really well. What's the logarithmic equation for the approximate number of prime numbers not greater than x? I can't think. Well, this is jolly exciting. Hey, Christopher. Well, I'm excited anyways. Now, the exam is going to last for two hours, okay, Christopher? First thing you're going to do is pop it in right here on the front. Okay, young man, are you ready to roll? Turn over your paper, please, Christopher. And begin. Question. What do you mean? I can't read the question. Can you see the question? I can see the question, but I can't read the question because when I look at the words, they seem all confused in the wrong way and mixed up to me. Right. What does the question say? Christopher, I'm sorry, but I can't help you like that. It's not allowed. Christopher, stop writing. Get your breath. Count the primes of the cardinal numbers again. One, eight, sixty-four. Now, 25. give it another go. Show that a triangle with sides that can be written in the form n squared plus one, n squared minus one, and two n, where n is bigger than one, is greater than zero. You don't have to tell us. But it's my favorite question. But people don't want to hear the answer to a maths question in a play. I think they do. Look, why don't you tell it after the curtain call? When you're done, you can take a bow, and anyone who wants to go home can go home. And then afterwards, anyone who stays, you can tell them how you solved it, okay? Okay. Christopher, can I have a talk with you? No, 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 you can't, no. Don't worry, I'll be here. How about a deal? Five minutes, no more. Look, Christopher, things can't go on like this. I don't know about you, but it just hurts too much. And you have to learn to trust me. I don't care how long it takes. If it's a minute today, two minutes tomorrow, three minutes the next day, and, and it takes years, I don't care. Because this is important. This is more important than anything. Let's call it a project. A project that we have to do together. And it'll take some time because it's a difficult project but it'll get better.
I promise. And I got you a present. To say sorry. And, well, you'll see. She's two months old. Christopher, I would never do anything to hurt you. You can't take her away with you. I'm afraid the flock's too small, but your father's gonna look after her here and you can come and take her for walks whenever you want. Does she have a name? No, she's yours to name. Harper, she's called Harper. <laughs> we have to go now. Yes. But you can come back tomorrow and see her then. Christopher. Yes. Here. What's this? It's your test results. Right. Aren't you going to open it? Right. Well, what does it say? I got a 1600. Oh? Wow! That's just, that's terrific! Yes. Aren't you happy? Yes, it's the best result. I know it is. How's your dog? She's very well. She slept on my bed last week when I stayed over at father's because mother's got flu. And she stayed there so she could bark in case anybody came into the room at night. Right, how are you getting on with your father? He planted a vegetable patch in the garden last week. I helped him and Harper walk. We planted carrots and peas and spinach, and I'm going to pick them when they are ready. He bought me a book, which is called Preparation for AP Calculus, and he told Mrs. Gaskin that I'm going to take AP Calculus next year. She said, okay. Okay. I'm going to pass it and get A plus. And then in two years, I'm going to take AP Physics and get A plus two. And then I'm going to go to university in another town. I can take Harper and my books and my computer. I can live in a flat with a garden and a proper toilet. Then I will get a college degree. Then I will be a scientist. I can do these things. I hope so. I can because I went to London on my own. I solved the mystery of who killed Wellington. I found Mother. I was brave. You were. And I wrote a book. I know. I read it. We turned it into a play. Does that mean I can do anything, do you think? Does that mean I can do anything, Siobhan? Does that mean I can do anything? Thank you very much for clapping and thank you very much for staying behind to our list to listen to how I answered the question on my SAT. Siobhan said it wouldn't be very interesting, but I said it was. She didn't tell me what I should use, so I decided to use all the machines and computers in the theater, including BL3500 arc lights, which are moving lights, light emitting diodes, Mayer MSL2 speakers, a DPA boom mic, and Zenheiser radio transmitter, and four PTD20KS Panasonic overhead projectors. I had two hours to answer 19 questions, but I forgot the first 30 minutes moaning and groaning. So I only have four minutes to answer this question. Show that a triangle with sides that can be written in the form n squared plus one, n squared minus one, and two n, where n is bigger than one, is right angled. And this is what I wrote. Start the clock. If a triangle is right angled, one of its angles will be 90 degrees and will therefore follow Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras said that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
To put it simply, if you draw squares outside the three sides of a right angle triangle, then add up this area of the two smaller squares, this will be equal to the area of the larger square. Come on, Bluey! The SAT question is an algebraic formula for solving right angle triangles. N squared plus 1 is the longest number and the biggest number in this equation, which makes it the hypotenuse, which is the longest side of the triangle. To find the area of a square, we will multiply the length times the width. So, the area of this square is 2n times 2n, which equals 4n squared. The area of this square is n squared minus 1 times n squared plus 1, which equals n to the fourth minus 2n squared plus 1. Now, if we add these two squares to get there, this equals n to the fourth plus 2n squared plus 1. Now, we need to find the area of the square on the hypotenuse, which is n squared plus 1 times n squared plus 1, which equals n to the fourth plus 2n squared plus 1, which is the same term. So if the area of the two smaller squares adds up to the area of the larger square. So all my squares fit together and satisfy Pythagoras' theorem. So the triangle is right angled. And that is how I got a 1600. Confetti!